Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin show where I answer questions that hit Bakerpedia.com every day. I am Dr. Lin from Bakerpedia, the internet's largest place for technical baking information and the only place you should go first when you need all your technical questions answered on the go. What I do on the show is to answer the questions that are the most important to commercial bakers. Yes, you know when you Mixers are spitting out doughs at above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, causing issues at the dough divider and molder. Who has the time to do an hour-long research on the internet? Well, this is what this show is for, so place any comments on the topics that you are researching on on Wikipedia, and if you're lucky, I'll answer them on the show. All right, today I'm going to focus um, the show on straight dough or no-time dough techniques. Today's show is brought to you by Diazna. With their premium Wendell mixer, you can produce consistently high quality straight doughs with a reduced mix time. This is done through their counter rotating tools that achieves develop doughs faster, thus reducing dough temperature. Learn more at diazna.com today. Today's show is on straight dough or no time dough. So, Straight dough or no-time dough is a one-step mixing process for bread making. With this method, all dry ingredients are put into the mixing bowl and mixed with water and ice at low speed. After the ingredients are evenly mixed, this is called the pickup stage. The mixer is turned up to the second speed until the dough is fully mixed or developed. Commonly used in mid-scale to larger commercial bakeries for short production runs of specialty products, straight dough is the preferred method of bread production for high throughput lines and facilitates with space constraints. Why? Because it's the cheapest line and most affordable to put in. There are no sponges to wait on or to spoil and the total process from start to finish could be as short as 90 minutes. That's fast, right? This is why this method is favorable amongst many American bakers. For straight dough to be successful, there are a number of factors to control during mixing. Yeast, flour, water, dough conditioner, other ingredients, and process variation. Dough development for the straight dough method depends greatly on yeast activity. Therefore, more yeast is required with straight dough fermentation. Most bakers use dry yeast, but remember, active dry or rapid rise yeast are the best because they react the fastest. And don't forget, in this system, the yeast is fighting for the water with other ingredients. So, any head start that you can give them in the form of a water brew would give them the ability to ferment faster, producing the gas and the acids to hasten dough maturation. Dough maturation in a straight dough system takes a longer time to achieve, and this doesn't depend on the quantity of the yeast. For example, the more yeast you use, the bigger the low volume, but this will also result in white pan edges. Why? Because you didn't give the dough a chance to mature and flow. For better dough maturation, give the yeast a head start and give it some more time to ferment. The stronger the flour, the longer the mixing requirement. However, the final quality of the end product will be higher. Compared to sponge fermentation, the straight dough method needs a stronger flour. Why? Because it just doesn't have the residence hydration time like the sponge and dough system. Increased hydration or residence time will enhance gluten performance in the dough. I'm hoping for you to find a good quality flour so that you could use less dough conditioners. Ask your flour supplier for the best kind of flour to use in your straight dough system. To achieve a standard dough consistency for dividing and molding, the water level is adjusted during dough mixing accordingly to the water absorption capacity of the flour. For you to be an expert in controlling this, you have to learn how to read the farinograph. 
look at each and every foreignograph that comes in with your COA and study the absorption from there. You need to take note on the peak height of the farinograph as this usually indicates how much water you have to use for that particular pet batch of flour. Unlike the sponge method where there is at least two hours dedicated to hydration, the straight dough method doesn't absorb as much water because the fermentation or hydration residence time is not long enough. So this is one of the biggest thing I have to point out about the straight dough system. At the volume that you're baking, your yields are not going to be as high as sponge and dough systems because of the water levels. The straight dough method requires more dough conditioners. Why? Well, because um, it, there's just less time for the sulfhydryl groups to interact. Therefore, more oxidizing agents, SSL, datum, and enzymes are needed to be used to strengthen the dough. This is absolutely a must because straight doughs are not mature or relaxed when they go through the dough divider or what I call the stressor of the system. And this causes a lot of surface issues that you will see as the dough proofs. Sometimes relaxing agents like L-cysteine and inactivated yeast are used because hydration isn't adequate to produce a relaxed dough that has a good pan flow. So dough conditioners must be a critical part of any straight dough system on commercial lines. Some ingredients are added for dough quality improvement besides the essential ingredients like flour, yeast, salt, and water. These ingredients could be things like fat, sugar, and salt for crumb softness and taste, enzyme active malt flour for gas production, gas retention, and crust color. While these are minor ingredients that may not affect the processing of the dough, other ingredients like fiber and non-grain flours, they would. So make sure that you adjust the absorption of the dough if you add these two ingredients into your formulation. The biggest variation from a straight dough system is from the final dough mixing temperature. This needs to be controlled very well to prevent molder holes and surface issues. Much of the problems in straight dough comes from the final dough temperature and the inability to control it. Another big process variation is the proofing time and temperature. If you control this well at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 90% relative humidity, and use this to get to your spec height, then you will have a consistent quality product. The advantages are easier to start production without early prep of the sponge or preferment, less labor needed, tighter and more uniform crumb, quick processing time, easier for last minute product change orders, and less capital intensive to start up. more mixing time and more utilization of energy in the mixing process. Stress doughs that are more wear and tear on the dough. Dough needs more conditioners to relax and be machinable. This is not label friendly to the current clean label trend. Less yield and more yeast is needed. Most frozen doughs are produced with the straight dough method in order to limit the fermentation time. This of course affects the flow of the product because there is very little fermentation and therefore no maturation of the dough before it is frozen. Much care must be taken to control the dough temperature and to keep it low so that the yeast doesn't start fermenting. If you have a volume or rice issue, check your yeast. Are you using the right kind of yeast? Most often, yeast levels need to increase up to two times the amount of regular dough formulations. Remember, water absorption for doughs need to be at a lower level. Too much free water will kill the yeast. 
Also, did you fully develop your dough so that your gluten network is stable enough to handle the freeze-thaw process? Underdeveloped dough will cause tear in the gluten network and this will create paths for gas to escape when the dough thaws out. Lastly, do you have your dough temperature less than 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius? This is to minimize fermentation. So these are the considerations that you have to make to make sure that your frozen dough product pleases your end customer. Salt delays are a must for straight doughs in high volume settings. This is why salt, as we know, is a vital flavor ingredient, but it also has other functions as this page discloses. As a dough strengthener, it is very efficient at its job, so much so that at a size 10 dough, you will hear a difference when you add the salt in and how it slows down your horizontal mixer. At such an impact, 1,000 pound doughs need to have a salt delay. Otherwise, you'll be stressing out your dough mixer. Want a longer mixer life? Delay your salt up to 75% of your mixing time. At high volume bakeries, mix times for straight doughs can go anywhere from 7 minutes up to 15 minutes, depending on the type of mixer you have, dough size, and your dough formulation. The biggest reason why straight doughs take a longer time to mix out is because it didn't have the time to hydrate flour gluten proteins. Without prior hydration, like the sponge and dough method, the straight dough method requires more friction and time to hydrate the proteins and develop the dough. This, of course, results in a longer mix time with a bigger increase in dough temperature. As a result, straight doughs usually require more temperature reduction techniques in the forms of ice or a glycerol cooling system. Straight dough in a high-speed commercial setting also requires the most dough conditioners, especially if green flour is used. Due to the lack of flour hydration and dough maturation, these dough conditioners must help oxidize, emulsify, strengthen, and make the dough extensible enough to process. Without dough conditioners, the result would be dough that is too bucky to process. This will result in dough pieces with fluctuating dough weights and inadequate pan flow. With clean label initiatives of replacing emulsifiers and oxidizers with enzymes, enzymes like glucose oxidase and xylanase and lipogenases are used. So yes, straight dough would require more enzymes to process a clean label. Controlling straight dough temperatures are usually very challenging due to the mixing process of unmatured dough. Even with temperature controlled mixers, dough comes out at a higher temperature and naturally goes into the proof of warmer than desired. The higher dough temperature burns out more yeast and affects the oxidation and enzymatic reactions in the dough. So yes, this is why this system requires more yeast. For reasons stated above, when deciding on this process, consideration must be given to have cooler flour, water temperatures, increased dough conditioners like reducing agents, and aged flour. Flour that is more than 48 hours old can affect water absorption and mixing times. In fact, the older the flour, like real car flour, the more water it will absorb. Real car flour reacts like a stronger flour due to the extra oxidation and strengthening of the proteins that happens during transit. Other factors to consider includes the following. Can you build your silos indoors to keep the flour cool? Can you temper and treat your water? Can you provide a longer proof time? 
these are all the possible considerations that you can make to help your straight dough process. That's all for today's session of Ask Dr. Lin. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, Bakerpedia can't be free without our sponsors. This session is sponsored by Diasna, the dough experts. Check out their linear transport system that is process control and automated. Yes, you heard me. Reduce labor, improve automation and quality, all while keeping a high throughput of 10,000 kilos of dough per hour and having the versatility of a quick recipe change. Check them out. Go to diasna.com to learn more. All right, before I go, please like and subscribe to this channel. See you next time.